you know, if you're a young person involved with drugs in the high school level or in a pad in Wolverloo or Darlinghurst, the only thing you hear about drugs is good. So that we've created a pad situation at the Drug Referral Centre in which we have Dr Howard Peake, uh, you might say, as the head of the pad. I want to, want to start off by putting drugs on trial and I want to make a few statements and then you might agree with some of these and you might uh, uh, like to tell me you don't agree with them. First of all, we have to be all the time prepared to change uh, if we're going to take advantage of our capacity to mature. And the person who stops this, who uh, says I will not change, uh, is stopping a normal and important process uh, through which he finds a sort of challenge and excitement in life. In fact, there is this constant challenge to change because it's much easier to stick to what we have. Uh, we have a, uh, a desire for stability, but at the same time we've got a challenge to do something uh, and to change. I would say, for the purposes of this discussion, the challenge is necessary. We have to have a challenge in life. And it can be any sort of challenge. What do you mean by life? Life. It's been you. Life. 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 Challenges, security and all the other crap. But isn't there a certain amount of uh, challenge in living? I mean, you just said life. What do you mean? What, is, what do you mean by life? I mean, what's what's it all there? I was talking nothing. I mean, what do you need? What more do you need? What have you got? An emotional teddy bear and secure and all that crap. It's not needed. You're alive. Till you die. It looks as though everyone's got their different meaning of the word security. What I'd like to hear now is perhaps what you mean by security. What's security to you? And to you? And to you? A blanket, a teddy bear. You cuddle the teddy bear every night. Well, we all cuddle our teddy bears to some extent. We, I mean, they don't take the form of a teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, uh, necessarily, but we all cuddle something which is symbolic is our teddy bear. My philosophy of life, I guess, is bound up in the fact that I believe human destiny is to come into close relationship with other human beings. And this means that where you see a need, you have to respond to it. Uh, it's not a question of academic or emotional involvement alone, it's a question of your total involvement and you can't sit down and decide I'm going to be involved to this extent or to that extent. In some ways this, this is a direct follow on from uh, a Christian upbringing, an example in life of Christ uh, demonstrated just this. It soon became very apparent that a centre was necessary to concentrate on the question of drug abuse and usage amongst the young people at frequent the chapel. The whole aim of this was in keeping with the policy of the chapel to provide a place where young people can come and talk without fear of the police, without fear of automatically ending up in a psychiatric institution. One of the big risks of becoming completely submerged and involved is that one loses one's own psychological stability and therefore I think everyone needs some other form of uh, escape, perhaps. I think there's a challenge and an excitement uh, in waiting for the next next wave. Going into the pub and getting drunk. Number two, when the police come to arrest me, get him one. Before he picks me up, I only get a poor night for it. It's about the, that's about the greatest pleasures I've known. Surely, surely you know the difference between things that are pleasant and things that are unpleasant. No. Will you tell us what you think? No, Why should I? I don't know what's pleasant to you, do I? Well, you tell me I can't tell you what's pleasant to you. But I'm saying the things that are pleasant to you, if you want them, you have to get off your backside and go and get them. No, I don't. That's it. Really because they're not just going to roll along just be with, like this living bloke here. Oh, no, they do. That's it. Yeah. They're going to come along. That's where I get my pleasure from. Taking drugs is not just for pleasure. It's not just that people enjoy it. That there must be some insecurity or... Well, this, this is just an explanation for the fact that they've found insecurity in this, um, you know, people. Like, yeah, ever since I gave up taking drugs, I, I am, I am still, well, I've, you know, I've, well, what, in four months I've travelled on the average 10,000 miles a month. Because every time I start making contact with people, I get frightened and I virtually just run away and uh, just shoot through and disappear. Uh, I uh, put a couple of state borders between me and the people. Where, where is it? If you had some junk, you would have uh, been able to 
associate with these people. Yeah. Well, that's reality, yeah. man. What did you do? <laughs> well, you physically destroyed him. So he might be happy being physically yeah, exactly. destroyed. Of course he might. Well, there you are. You can't say it's in the bad. He's enjoying it. I didn't say it was bad. You did. You said look what it did to him. I didn't. Implying that this was a bad thing. I didn't. I didn't say it was bad. I said, look at the situation. Look, look at this destructive thing. Well, you're saying it's bad. You've been discussing about the drug problem and all this. That's your own problem. Uh, the first thing I can remember in my life is being in an orphanage after my my mother had left my father. But then my father remarried, and there was a lot of difficulty here because there was competition between this new woman and us for the love of the father. I'd remove the bottle of ether from the cupboard and also have a clean cloth, which I used to buy from Woolworths. Fold this cloth over into four parts and I'd pour about a teaspoon, a couple of teaspoonfuls of ether into it. And on the second drawing in, about the, the, ner the nerves flash. Or the, so every nerve in your body has a little orgasm and this lasts for about 30 seconds. And on the fourth sniff, you start to stagger. It's uh, starting to affect your motor nerves. And at this stage, a rather peculiar noise occurs in your ears, sort of a... Uh, during this period, I became more and more alone. I had, the only friends I had were friends of my brother, and they weren't really very good friends at all. I didn't experience this as loneliness. I just experienced it as a kind of an empty, an emptiness, nothing to do. I just wander around to the local dump and sort of pick up the junk in the dump and look through it for something interesting. Or I'd go and sing in a drain pipe. Uh, there was just a vacuum. So I went and bought an electric motor to turn the handle, as it were. And I also connected various resistors to it so that I could choose varying degrees of voltage. At first, when the current is small, you feel a certain burning pain on your head. But this goes away. After a while, you can increase the voltage, you see. And there's another pain, and that goes away. Uh, doing this for three or four minutes does definitely seem to temporarily elate one, anyway. Um, I've given up completely the idea of uh, using drugs, the idea of any other form of escape at all. Oh, it's dangerous that I walk up the street when I'm going home. Some car might go plowing straight through me and knock me in a little bit. But I realise that, and I'm willing to take the risk. Now, if I want to take STP, and that's supposed to be really dangerous. If I realise the dangers, why not take it? <laughs> I've shot a path of grain of H, you know, that's the first hit of H. Nothing. No dangers, you know. Most people, you have a hit of H and you're dead within three years. Yeah. Well, you know, this just isn't. Well, that's poor education, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, well, haven't got the right message. You've got, you've got a good supply, you've got all you need for a lifetime, that's right? True. But if you keep taking it, you'll, you'll poison yourself off. <coughs> because your body gets to the stage where, where one more you're shot and you're dead. strange to find myself back in a church on, on a motorcycle. Why do you come to Whiteside Chapel? I don't know. Come up and hear the music. Finally, we had sex. And she got pregnant. No fights going on, I would discuss her.